Welcome. Uh, today I'm going to talk about properties of exponents. Uh, specifically, I'm going to do ones where you have like a mixture of multiply and divide, as opposed to just one very specific thing. So you, we'll do some samples. You'll see what I'm talking about. But I do want to say that I'm going to coax it in the language of sort of a hand-me-down relationship. So this is the the coefficient or the number in front of the x uh, is like the big brother, big sister, that type of thing. And then your exponents would be the little brother, little sister. So if I was to do the order of operations, I'd have parentheses on top, exponents, multiply, divide, and add, subtract. And subtract and add can be in any order you want. Division and multiplication are interchangeable, and you just do them left to right. But anyway, if the relationship that I'm trying to do, like in this case, is a multiply relationship. I'll still do the multiply and get 9. If uh, when I do the big brother with that operation, the little brother sort of gets a hand-me-down operation, so an addition situation. So I'm dealing with x to the 4 plus 1, and I get 5. So that's it. On the flip side of it, if I have this, uh, in this case, the big brother or big sisters or whatever, do division. So I do 4 divided by 2 and I get 2. So the little brother sister set gets the subtraction. So I tend to circle the one that's the bigger one. That way it reminds me if it stays in the numerator or the denominator. And then I do my subtraction. So I do 3 minus 1, which is, of course, 2. So I get x to the second power. So that's where it's headed, uh, just as a quick reminder. Now from there, I want to go in and do some of the problems. Let me increase the size of these things because it's quite small, I realize now. That's a little better. Now, my suggestion is you um, do anything in the numerator or denominator that you can combine first. Uh, I also like to tend, I also tend to move, I'm sorry, uh, things like negative exponents. I tend to flip them over as quickly as possible. But before I do any of that, I'm going to combine my numerator. I'm going to apply this negative up here. That way it's not in some weird place. So if you have your page and it has a negative, make sure that you just apply it to the first number. So this is a 1. My big brother operation in the numerator is multiply. So I do negative 4 times negative 1, and I get positive to 4. And then I'm going to do my x's together. And the big brother operation is multiply. So the hand-me-down is uh, addition. So I do 2 plus negative 4. So x of 2 times x of negative 4 is really x to the 2 plus negative 4. And it gives me x to the negative 2 power. Uh, by the way, if you get overwhelmed by looking at this type of problem, I tend to use the reference of looking at, uh, like when you hear you, you miss the forest for the trees. In this case, it's better to look at the trees. Look at each individual letter uh, on its own merits. Like, look at the x's first, and then look at the y's, and look at the coefficients. And then combine them all together in one nice piece, and it makes everything easier. But if you look all as one big thing, it can get very overwhelming. So for the y's, I'll do negative 2 plus negative 1 and get y to the negative 3. The bottom stays. Now I can move everything around. It, now that it's sort of organized, I can move everything I need to move. Negative exponents, remember, flip to the other side of the fraction. So this x to the negative 2 goes down here with the original x to the negative 2. We'll talk about the opportunity to not have to do this one step if you don't want. And then the y to the negative third becomes y to the third on the bottom. The 4 stays on top. The 4 has no exponent applied to it. That 2 uh, after it is on the x and not the 4. So don't apply anything if it's not there. Now from here, I just look to see if my numerator and denominator are nice and clean. My x's, as you can see, uh, the big brother, these would be 1 times 1, so the little brother would be add. So I end up with a final answer of 4. And 2 plus 2 gives me x to the 4th. And then end up with y to the 3rd. So let me check to see if that one's right. Because I don't always do these correctly. Um, so there you go. They put it in some weird order for their answer, but still, works the same. Um, I'll do a couple more. So from here, clean everything up in the denominator. The numerator's as clean as it's going to get for right now. I'm going to go ahead and put 1's in for exponents that I don't see and for coefficients that I don't see just to make it easier to not lose things. That's this type of problem, it's really easy to do that. So I'm going to go ahead and rewrite the numerator as is. 
my denominator, it would be negative 1 times 1, so it gets negative 1. Then I'd do my little brother operation, so negative 2 plus negative 4 gives you x to the negative 6. y to the first uh, plus y to the fourth, or times y to the fourth was really uh, y to the 1 plus 4 power, so y to the fifth. That's where I was headed with that logic. Now I can do my uh, negative exponents flip to the other side thing. y to the negative 4 goes down here, x to the negative 6 goes up, so I do x to the first, x to the sixth. Um, this goes down here, so I end up with negative 1 and y to the fifth y to the fourth. Remember when you move them they change to positive exponents. Do you have to do this step that I just showed you? Absolutely not. If you can see that you're going to go ahead and combine the four and the five, go ahead and do that. Do the negative two divided by negative one. Combine your x to the first and x to the sixth. It's fine. Um, I'm just writing out all the steps so you can see it if you need it. Uh, I'm super visual so I tend to do that, but if you don't need to see all the steps, just do what you need to do to get to the right answer. Now I can do anything that I need to, to work with. So my relationship between the negative 2 and the negative 1 here is a division 1. So negative 2 divided by negative 1 is 2. And this is the bigger one, so it stays on top. Now my x values in the numerator are multiply, so the little brother operation is add. So I end up with x to the 7th. And on the bottom, same thing. So 5 plus 4 is 9. So I end up with that answer. One more, and I think that's good. And like, you, if you're watching this in some place other than a classroom, you can probably dump out of it at this point. Um, let me see if I can come up with a prettier one, or and by that I mean hideous. I just want to find the ugliest one that I could find. This one's kind of gross, so let's do this one. All right, so the first thing I want to do is get my numerator or denominator all cleaned up. The denominator is nice. It's in a very organized fashion, and I'm going to put a 1 there to remind myself. Um, everything's got a, an exponent on top, so I don't have to worry about that. I'm going to do the big brother operation on top, so 4 times negative 2 is negative 8. Then I'll do all my little brother stuff. 4 plus negative 1 is x to the third. 4 plus 3 is 7. This actually became much nicer than I realized. Um, so in this case, uh, the big brother operation is a division, so my little brother operation would be uh, subtraction. The neg I tend to circle the ones that are bigger so I know where they're going to end up. Like the negative 8 is bigger, so I'll do negative 8 divided by 2. So to remind me, if I just get a single answer, I'm going to leave it on top, and I do. It becomes 4. For x to the third, it's the only one, but circling it reminds me to keep it. And then 7 is bigger than 1, so I just do 7 minus 1 and get y to the 6. But the circle there reminds me that, yeah, I don't put it on the bottom, I keep it on top. In this case, do you need to have a denominator? No, it's divided by 1. You can put it, uh, divide by 1 there if you want to, but it's not a requirement of this problem. So most of the time you'll just see it as being left just in this format like this. I don't know why they decided to put y in front. It doesn't really matter because it's commutative, but... There it is. Hopefully this uh, provides some uh, focus in those big, huge problems that you see, and it might make it a little easier to move forward.